Now, Mike, you wrote in your letter to the LPJ family, you said one of the hardest jobs of a leader is to know when their work is done. How would you know your work was done with the LPJ tour? Well, surprisingly, I think uh, COVID had a big, uh, big role in it. I mean, uh, as we were living through this pandemic in 2020, it hit me as I was witnessing it. My team had this, uh, this team that I've built over the last 11 years. Uh, of course, I was involved in, in participating, but they really took this and, uh, and took charge of the business. And it kind of reminded me when my kids went to college. You know, it's a sad moment, but you realize your kids are ready. You've got them ready. And at this point, it's time to get out of their way and, and let them run. And I looked at the business and I realized that the LPJ is in great hands. We've never been more financially sound, more sponsors, more global partners, more TV coverage or television viewership. And um, I feel like it's the right time. To, I, I've said this for the, for the very first staff meeting I ever had. I said to the team, we are just relay racers, the batons in our hand now. And at some point, we're going to start to slow down. And it's our job when we feel ourselves slowing down to hand the baton to the next r runner who can go faster. I feel like it's that time. Let's find the next 40 to 45-year-old version who can run as hard as I did for the last 11 years because the brand, the members, uh, and the game deserve that. Mike, there were challenges in 2020, also challenges when you took over January 4th, 2010. Sponsors, hemorrhaging, players, angry, financial crisis. What was the biggest challenge when you took over? You know, it was probably, Damon, uh, getting back to basics. I thought, Damon, I was going to be the great educator. I was going to come in and take everybody to class and teach them how to do it. After my first few player meetings, I realized my players had it. They understood that the, uh, the check writer was important that we had to understand what was important to their business if we wanted to grow our business. And um, I really just started to take my cues from them. We created something we called role reversal, which means we spend more time talking about the sponsor than we do about ourselves. We understand what they want to get delivered week in and week out. Our, our tour players write thank you notes every week. I mean, what other uh, professional sport can tell you that? And uh, so it was really kind of getting back to basics a little bit. And then I remember saying to my, um, to my board very early on, you'll, you'll understand this reference, Damon, I said, I felt like that was the manager of the Chicago Cubs, which doesn't make sense now, but back in 2010, it did. I said, we've got incredible talent on the lineup card, but the team kind of thinks it's going to lose in the playoffs as opposed to thinks it's going to win. And we just needed a few wins and start to believing as good as we were. And, and once we started to build that momentum, it was, uh, it was exciting to see it go from there. So, um, you know, I get asked a lot today, you know, things I'm most proud of. And, and there isn't one thing, but what I'm really proud of is, is we have a team that will now take the LPGA to a level I couldn't have envisioned back in 2010 when I walked in the door. Well, Mike, something else you said back in 2010 was this would probably be a four-year tenure for you. Instead, <laughs> it's 11. Uh, what kept you around? Uh, I love the people. I mean, you know this, Damien. You can't fake this. I mean, I love this game. I love the athletes. Uh, I love our 2,000 teachers. Um, uh, I felt necessary, you know, at the time. We, we didn't, you know, we had a... 125 hours of television a year. You know, now we're at 600 hours of TV. We had 10 countries buying our TV rights, and now there's 200. It's um, It just felt like the stage needed to be bigger than it was for these incredible athletes. I mean, I've said this to the players many times. I'll never be the 100 best anything in my life, but I sit across the table from the 100 best female golfers on the planet, and I wanted to create a stage that was as impressive as what they had achieved to get to that level. And... Um, it's, uh, it's been an incredible run. The, I like the people, the business, and the, and the people that I do business with so much, it was hard to leave. In fact, numerous times in the last few years, I've got it close to my, my brain to say it's time. But I always ended with, but not yet, because we still have to do, and I'd fill in the blank, and the still have to do's never end. And I realized about Thanksgiving of, this, of 2020 that it was time to really step away and let the team take this to the next level. Now, Mike, I, I'm just going to speak for Damon. I mean, I think we both agree you've got to be a top 100 commissioner, right? That's got to yeah, be fair to sure. say. I mean, I know you're saying you're not a top 100 anything, but uh, something that has been a big part of 2020 leading into uh, this announcement, it's been the biggest shift in, in women's movement we've seen. You're obviously in charge of a women's tour, and we've seen so much movement there. What was that like as you were dealing with a pandemic through 2021, listening to so many players on your tour voice what they were thinking. Yeah, Shane, you know what's been interesting is, is we've, been, we've been experiencing that movement for about five years. I think in 2020, everybody else woke up to it, but I would tell you in the last five years, I, I have so many phone calls with corporations that start with, they tell me about their commitment to, to equality, their commitment to women's empowerment, their commitment to women's in the boardroom, 
Um, but they would, when they look at their when they look at their spending, their consumer spending and their sponsorship spending, it doesn't reflect that commitment. And so a lot of conversations will start with Mike. Help me do in public what we're doing inside the walls of our corporation. And um, as more and more companies started to do that and do that successfully well, it led to more and more. I think what's happened in 2020 is a is a broad scale awakening on so many topics, whether it's social injustice or women's issues, diversity, et cetera. But in the, in the topic of, of women's sport and um, and opening the doors for women in a significant way in terms of sponsorship and TV support, that had been that had been started years ago. And 2020 was just the breakthrough moment where the rest where the rest, rest of the world woke up to a to a wave we've been riding for quite a while. You know, Mike, you may not hold this role in 2022, but I know you'll still care about the LPGA Tour and its fortunes. What's next for the tour? What would you like to see happen with the LPGA going forward? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, there's probably three major things, uh, Damon. I mean, the first is we've started the expansion to make sure that we provide opportunities for women literally around the world. I mean, we, you know, when I started, we picked up the Symmetra Tour and made it our development tour. Uh, you know, a year or so ago, we got involved in a joint venture with the LET, and that's that's been a home run, I think, both for the players and the businesses coming together. I think in time, I'd like to see that expand into Asia, where there might be a Symmetra Tour in America, an LET Tour in Europe, and a and an LPGA tour in Asia, all three of those tours leading to the LPGA. Um, I'd really like to see us break through in terms of having real, substantial, significant, and most importantly, consistent network opportunities. You know, when you only show up on network six or seven times a year, it's hard to build a following. But I think when somebody gives us the opportunity to live there on a more regular basis, you'll see the world respond to these incredible female athletes. And then I really want to take what's uh, what's become an incredible teaching operation. You know, we've got 1,800, I think 1,900 LPGA teachers, but we're just hit, scratching the surface on taking that around the world and making sure that young girls growing up anywhere in the world have female role models to teach them the game and learn the game from. Um, I think the rest of what I hope to see is already going to hope it's already going to happen, whether I hope it or not. I mean, the, the future of this game is female. I mean, when I took over 15 percent of youth golf was was girls. And today, you know, it's about 38 percent. So. As I say many times, you know, this game is going to look more female in about 10 or 15 years because the junior game is already more female. And for me, I'm really proud of that. I love this game. It's been important to me. And I want to make sure this game influences everybody, both genders, not just a male game. And, and at this point, that momentum is so significant, you couldn't stop it if you wanted to. Mike, I have an analogy I'm going to throw at you. When Jerry West stepped down as general manager of the Lakers, he still consulted with the team, hung around, cared about its fortunes. Who would you like to see? replace you as LPGA commissioner, or at least what kind of person? Um, you know, the who is is, is going to be an open-ended question. I mean, we're going to do what, you know, boards do. We're going to hire a search firm. We've got great internal candidates. We're going to look at external candidates. I just hope the next person that follows me does it with passion. I mean, this is a job you can't do part-time. As I said to the board, let's find a 40 to 45-year-old who can go as hard at this for the next 10 years as I did for the last 11. And um, it can't be just a business. It's It's got to be personal. This is personal to me. I raised three boys, and I never had a chance to raise a little girl. And um, and I think back to how much I missed and not having that experience. And what I got in this experience is understanding the challenges that young girls face, that women face. And it's it's become part of me. It's never going away. And uh, I just got off a, a Zoom call with our whole staff, and I just said, whether you like me or hate me, your family, and you know, just like a lot of families, you've got people in your family you like and you don't like, but I'm not going away. Um, this is going to be part of my life the rest of my life. This game is in me, and the LPGA is in me, and I can promise you, it doesn't matter who's sitting in the chair that currently says commissioner, I'm going to be there to help any way I can. Well, speaking of chairs, you could go Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and do a whole tour this year, walk away in Naples. You can get a gift at every LPGA tour stop. What's your timetable? When will you step down? Yeah, I'm not as talented as Kareem, nor do I deserve a full year of, <laughs> of goodbye. But what I said to the board is, uh, I'll be here as long as you need me in transition, but no longer. And I didn't mean that as a shot. What I mean is, People think of these overlapping transition times is really great the longer they are, but um, the truth just isn't in the case. I mean, in my case, I asked for a one-week overlap with the interim commissioner when I came in. Whoever comes in needs to make it their tour, their culture, their business as soon as they can. I want to help them find the right person. I want to be available to that person, but I don't want to be in the way, and I think I would be in the way fairly soon. So I'm guessing this is a three- or four-month thing in terms of finding that transition. That'll give me time in that time, too, to kind of figure out what's next uh, for Mike Wan, but um, no, I don't. I don't want a long. I don't want a long uh, goodbye show, and um, 
Um, and in a weird way, the pandemic probably helps me. We can't get together physically anyway. And after a few calls that I've had this morning, I don't think I could emotionally take a long goodbye. But um, it's been incredible, and I'm really proud of I'm proud of what we've accomplished. And more importantly, I'm a, I'm proud of the slope that the LPGA is on and just how high it's going to rise over the next 10 to 20 years. And a real thank you to Golf Channel NBC for what you guys have done to make women's golf uh, prominent again. And you know, when I talk about the increase in hours, that starts from the production crew on your team that's made that possible. We sell those hours all over the world, but if it wasn't for you producing the LPGA, uh, the world wouldn't know how good we are. So on behalf of all of us, our players who play and our fans that follow, thank you guys for what you've done for the sport. Well, Mike, you're still commissioner, and you still have a lot of challenges to face. Uh, global pandemic last year, something you told me in July, um, you said you canceled a lot of things because of the answers you got. They didn't, they, they didn't satisfy you. As you look at 2021 over the next few months, it's going to look a lot different than maybe what you thought it would look like. What does your 2021 look like over these next two months or so, and what are the challenges, the new challenges you're going to face? Good question, Shane. Yeah, I think when we talked, which was kind of, you know, mid-pandemic scare, I guess, um, we just weren't sure how good we were going to be at managing this. We didn't want to leave any of our sponsors in a bad place health-wise. We certainly didn't want to leave the markets we visited. And I didn't want uh, my young athletes or caddies or staff members to feel like they were taking on a risk simply to pursue a career that's important to them. I think if we proved anything in 2020, we proved we can do this. We had 7,500 tests and you know, uh, you know, and maybe really 20 on-site positives. Um, nobody hospitalized throughout the whole year, whether that was staff, caddy, volunteer, et cetera. So um, I think we proved this was safe. And between you and I, Shane, I had more than my share of sponsors, venues, cities and countries say to me, we're gonna watch you in 20 and we'll talk again in 21. And I think that's fair. And I think the good news for me is during this off season, those talks have been very positive. They've appreciated what we've done, how we've done it. It hasn't been, I won't lie to you, it hasn't been a lot of fun to play professional golf in 2020, but it's doable um, and it's achievable and our fans benefit from it because let's face it, we could all use a little more sport in our life. And so we're proud to be one of the sports that can be played and can be played safely. So um, yeah, when you don't know the answers or the answers you're getting are uncertain, you sit tight. Once you can get out there and prove those answers, which I think we've done in 2020, it makes it very achievable. We're, we're not gonna see fans probably until March at the earliest, um, and that's okay. You know, we moved back most of our international travel to early May versus usually late January and early February, again, to give us some time. Um, but all those things seem to be much more doable now. And uh, I think there's reason to be a lot more confident today than we certainly were when we were talking about getting started in 2020 post-pandemic. Uh, Mike, I know there's a lot of sad faces around the LPGA with the news today. Uh, maybe some sad uh, faces at home with your three sons. I know you told me during the pandemic, you were taking it to them on the golf course. Are they a little nervous about where the handicap's going to get if you, if you step away from the job? Well, as my oldest said to me the other day, he made, he both, as only your children can do, compliments and criticisms come actually in the same sentence. Um, where, you know, he said, you know, this is the third time, Dad, you're leaving a really good job without one. And I know you've gone two for two, but at some point you're going to push your luck. So, I mean, that was, you know, that didn't seem like a compliment. But then he actually said in the next sentence, you know, a lot of people talk about uh, about following their dreams. We've been lucky enough to watch you do it, and it makes it easier for us to follow that. So I hope my kids, uh, I hope my kids have the guts to um, to follow their dreams and take jobs that don't always make sense in terms of your family. This has been a, a significant family sacrifice for me to be the commissioner of the LPGA. And I love the fact that my family let me do this and travel around the world and try to tuck my kids in on face on Facebook or through a face, you know, FaceTime call occasionally. But if nothing else, if my kids through this watch their dad do something he really loved and felt passionate about, and as a result, have the guts to do that themselves, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, handicap wise, um, I'd love to tell you that more time on the golf course has resulted in much better play. <laughs> uh, it's only resulted in much more golf. So I'll take, you know, that's one for two and I'll take it. Well, Mike, uh, I just want to say, I mean, it, we have guests on the show. We will have guests on the show and we respect a lot of them. But I think I speak for Dana and I when I say, uh, over the last 10 years, it's been amazing to watch what you've been able to do uh, with the LPGA Tour. We're both fans of golf, and we're fans of women's sport. And uh, for you to spend so much time growing this amazing game, uh, just a thanks from the both of us for everything you've done, and good luck with everything you're going to do going forward. Thank you, guys. Whether you had me on to talk about tough issues or, or easy issues, you always treated both the LPGA and me with respect, and I appreciate it.